Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well, and welcome to tonight's very interesting bonus upload. Tonight's bonus is going to be broken down into two parts in one video. Before we get into it, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click the like button, takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's bonus, shall we? All right, guys, today's interview is a subscriber, just recently subscribed, and really enjoys listening to the channel, uh, feels like He's part of the family, which he is. He also was a hunting guide out in Idaho and a couple other states, which he will share with us. He's got a couple of really amazing experiences and pretty frightening, if you ask me. So, uh, also, he sent me some pictures of him on some hunts, so you guys know exactly he is the real deal. All right, everybody. Today I have a subscriber who I just spent about an hour speaking with. He was a guide and, um, well, he was a professional guide in Idaho, I believe. Um, well, I know. And uh, super nice guy. I haven't heard any of his experiences yet because I want to be where you guys are. So right now, I'm going to turn the mic over to Phil. Phil, how are you, my friend? All right. I'm great, man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you reaching out to me. I'm glad that I saw yep. your comment and you yep. saw me. I commented right back. I saw <laughs> I saw that you were a guide and I was like, oh, man, this guy's got some stuff right here. <laughs> And, um, yeah. you know, we talked, we're pretty much on the same page as a lot of things. And, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking forward to hearing about your experiences and what you've seen out in the woods, because you spent a lot mm -hmm. of your time just working in the woods. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the mic yeah. is yours, my friend. Okay. Yep. I appreciate the, the time and, and, um, just the opportunity, uh, to, maybe help somebody or, or yeah fit a couple puzzle pieces uh for somebody like we were talking earlier but yeah. um i'll maybe just start from like you say usually uh i'll just start from the beginning and, right. and go from there yeah that works okay well um like a lot of people i grew up watching the the Bigfoot TV shows and always, you know, <laughs> never fully could truly believe, but was always really intrigued and interested. And, and, um, it was probably, I was probably in middle school or something when the finding Bigfoot and all that came out. And yeah, I watched, I watched a lot of that and, um, and then life started and you kind of get away from the cryptid scene, uh, sometimes. And so fast forward, I was 19 and I, I grew up in Iowa and I, um, moved out to Arizona and, um, ended up yeah staying in the mountains for like 15 years and 
guided hunts in, in Idaho and, and Montana and Colorado and um, managed some guide schools along the way. And um, so anyway, it all started really with me moving out west to Arizona. And when I got out there, we <laughs> we started camping and, and mountain biking and, and um living the desert life which was totally new to me no. um i chose arizona yeah because my grandpa got older and moved out there so we'd visit him but so anyway um the first strange thing really that ever happened to me that i really can't explain was at outside of phoenix i was living in tempe and we would go to Coon Bluff State Park, um, just, I don't know, half hour drive from like Tempe and you go through Apache Junction, Mesa and Apache Junction and, and get onto the desert. And um, so me and a buddy were out there and we'd just, we call it cowboy camping, but sleeping bag next to the fire and sleeping under the stars and college age so we were having a couple beers and and we walked back to the truck and nobody else was there middle of winter <laughs> um and we look over and above where we were camping was i suppose it's you know a place is called coons bluff and it, it was it's a bluff there that people would i i had seen um kind of rock climbing i i saw him repelling off this bluff probably like a 40 foot straight down to the salt river uh, you know just a small well in the in the rainy season that river isn't small but at the time just a a small of course there's not much water in the winter time in in arizona but right. so anyway we're <laughs> we on top of this coons bluff is a is just a red light and um you know it was a little too far away to knowing what i know now i <laughs> was it was it two glowing eyes two red glowing eyes i don't think so but that that was obviously the you know not what i was thinking it was just uh, a stationary red light that just appeared while, while we were standing at, at the back of the truck in the parking lot and didn't move, no noise, no nothing, no nothing. And it's like, okay, somebody's must be up there, right? Like logical answer. Um, and for a couple hours, just that light, that red light just stayed right there and um so you know not a big deal in the morning we we scrambled up there from the backside and, and checked it all out because it was significant enough where we we're like okay in the morning we're gonna go check this out we just fell asleep we just ended up going to sleep in the light <laughs> and um anyway so didn't see any sign of anything we hiked around up on that bluff for all day and we you know we weren't doing any investigation we were just going for a hike but right. so fast forward uh, a few weeks and i'm out there camping and by myself just kind of i would i was i don't know maybe it was school winter break or something for school i was at a community college and um anyway i'm by myself i'm like a quarter mile from coon bluff from the actual campground and uh small campground um i'm up river from the campground a quarter mile maybe there's a pack of wild horses that probably still to this day you could go see them um and I just remember seeing them that day or the day before and, and had my dog with me, I guess. But um, so I'm in my tent one night and I'm, I'm camped kind of off the river, like 100 yards. And and I'm near a dry creek bed and it's kind of, oh, 
a brushy area. It wasn't full of just cactuses. We're in the river bottom, so it was like, I don't know what kind of trees anymore, but if it was some kind of an oak brush um, and some cottonwoods maybe. But anyway, <laughs> I'm right up off, off this dry creek bed that when there was water in that creek, it just, of course, went right into the Salt River 100 yards away. And um, crawled in my tent, going to sleep, and I'm woken up out of my out of a dead sleep from a growling that was louder than anything I was ever familiar with growing up in the Midwest. Mm. Um, and I. I grew up hunting and fishing in the woods and, and deer deer hunting. Um, wasn't real familiar with bears at the time, I guess, but I knew there wasn't any bears there. And my and it's this this really loud growling noise is I don't know. We'll say fifty yards upstream, up that dry creek bed, um, away from the river, and. It, I jumped out of my bed <laughs> and started looking for, you know, all I had was a knife and I had a, as silly as it sounded, I, well, not silly, but I had my compound bow and I had a target and that's why I had the bow. I was just practicing archery and, um, while I was camping. So anyway, I start gathering, I start looking for a light and looking for my knife and my bow and anything. And I'm, <laughs> you know, it's, I, I'm trying to process what, cause I'm in a new state, new area, well, you know, right. I, it's like, okay, well, what is this animal? And I'm, I'm like, okay, it's, it's gotta be a wild hog. <laughs> and, um, but it's, it's, it's a creepy creepy loud growl and just as i'm processing this from from to closer to the river <laughs> i hear something responding with as freaking crazy of a growl as i'm <laughs> hearing on the other side of me wow. and i'm right in the middle of this man and and i I, I couldn't make this up, but it's, it's, this is all happening in a few seconds. And the next thing I know, these two creatures, these two animals are coming towards each other. And, I, and I'm put, painting this picture in my head that I'm right in the middle of this. And I'm thinking it's like two wild boars who are about ready to meet and just have a fight <laughs> you know whether it's mating season or or what i don't know but uh, so i am i have jumped out of my tent i have my knife in my hand my dog is not making a noise just she right next to me jumped out of the tent and i had long johns on or a full uh <laughs> full onesie long john onesie and standing there like a madman with a knife and these two animals or well they're not animals i mean i've researched there's no hogs there <sighs> maybe there is now i don't know there's right. there's not documented freaking hogs in the phoenix valley right yeah, yeah. and if it um, really quick if it was like yep. some people may be like, oh, it was a coyote, but this was far deeper, way deeper. I'm than... hearing, no, yeah. I am hearing these two things at this point coming, running. <laughs> it was like, I'm thinking I'm going to get ran over. It was like, I'm not saying the ground was shaking and everything, but I am, I am hearing these, this extremely loud, snarl growl like dude from a movie and sh i am shaking and it's pitch dark and these two creatures 
I felt this part. I felt, I felt them collide. They were in, I'm on top of like an eight foot or 10 foot pretty steep bank that, that Creek bank. It's a dry Creek bed now. And those two things met at right at me, um, in the bottom of the Creek bed and just uh, collided. And I, sprinted i couldn't find a light i all i had was a flashlight i'm sure at the time it's not like we had a cell phone spotlight or anything i didn't have anything (laughs) no headlamps nothing this was probably 2006 and um i just we take off (laughs) running through the woods in the direction of the campground where my truck's parked and i never looked back i left everything and never, and I went back like a five or seven days later, maybe two weeks. I don't want to say for sure, but a week or two later, and all my 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 tent was trampled down flat, and um, just not shredded, you know, not. And maybe some people came by, some kids or hope, some whoever, and. Uh, I didn't have anything really there to steal and, but nothing was stolen and, um, just flattened. (laughs) Um, so I grabbed my stuff and, and anyway, never went back. And so that was my first experience with, and, and I wasn't thinking, I was still thinking some kind of freaking animal, right? I, just had no idea i i didn't even you know cryptids was in the wasn't part of my thought process at the Mm. time um so did the did the light on top of the bluff was that a you know there's all sorts of ufo sightings in the phoenix valley of course um was this anything i i don't know don't know don't care too much obviously it's not affecting me was that involved with with what happened with me with these creatures like i've over the years i've bounced back and forth and as i've learned a lot more and i've i've dove head deep into the into sasquatch and and now dog man too these last few years um but so I've had a thought, you know, with something, I just, I don't know, right? I don't even want to speculate. It's like, was something pr- protecting me or did they not even know I was there? You know, mm. it's like, was something on the other side of my tent um, and heard this thing coming and was like, nope, that's not happening, right? Uh, and met this met this animal or this creature or or whatever and and just stopped anything from happening and i i was out of there i took you know i was running through the dark trees in my face getting whacked by the everything and um so anyway that's when i'm yeah 19 or so Hmm. and now we can no, that's that's if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Just by judging from where you're talking, Mar- mm-hmm. Maricopa County. Oh yeah. Is that the Gila River or no? I want it's. I want to say it's the Salt River. Okay. Oh, it's and, that. That's the name of it, the Salt River. Okay. The Salt River. Yeah, Coons Bluff State Park. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I'm not really ground. familiar with the the rivers in that area, but I knew yeah. Coons Bluff was it's like a, Maricopa yeah, people County. People tube down. Yeah, people tube down that Salt River like crazy, okay. and uh, in the summer, and it's a big destination. And yeah, but you're out there. You know, you're we're 25 minutes out of the city, and we're so you're in the desert, and your listeners and <laughs> in the area are, are gonna know what yeah. I'm talking about. But um, most definitely. Yeah, so to, fast forward. Um, <laughs> it's hard to. I'm just gonna jump right ahead to whatever you're comfortable with, brother. Yeah, this is your show. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and. Um, 
so it's my it's 2018 now and at the time of this and it's late august i'm uh, a hunting guide in idaho and elk season's right around the corner a week away first of september for for archery um i'm i'm around the frank church uh i'm kind of right at right near the border of the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness area. Um, low, the closest township, I'm, you know, we're, the closest township is Edwardsburg, Idaho. And there's an airstrip there and there's a range, forest ranger, park ranger cabin and, and a lodge that I, I guess has reopened now and they sell food. And it's, this is, I ain't kidding you, two and a half hours down a gravel road to to anything <laughs> we would go three hours or three and a half hours one way to a to a decent good grocery store right um one so you're way. out in god's country yeah yep north central kind of central idaho um and we're we're there packing packing in our back couple back country camps um we're packing in a bunch of hay it's all horse and mule. It's a horse and mule operation. Um, so it's a week before the hunters get there. There's me, another guide, and our wrangler cook are the three that are that are around and, and setting camps and stuff. And um, <laughs> so one one afternoon, I'm with our wrangler cook, Tess. And we, um, we were, we were together. We went there together. We were dating. Um, and so we have the horses staged up on the, on the mountain. Um, we're a half hour from, from Edwardsburg, the township. It's, it's not a town, but there's a remote airstrip, a forest service airstrip there that it's open to public that air, all the, there's like 28 remote forest service airstrips in Idaho and they're all open to public, the public pilots. And that's really, that, it's one of the thing that, things that makes Idaho a special place. Um, and it helps, you know, people can, it makes some really deep wilderness areas accessible. Um, so it's an afternoon and we're up feeding these horses. We got them staged at a trailhead and, um, we had an hour to burn. Um, we had probably around at the time, like 22 horses and mules. And we were staying down at a, at a cabin in Edward, near Edward, Edwardsburg. And, there's anyway um we had the horses staged like i said and we had a couple hours to burn in between the times that we were you know we were, whatever we were doing with the horses we wanted to wait a little bit till we threw them some hay and and watered them because um we they were we had some makeshift pens holding pens but they were just tied to hitching rails that we would have to put up each year and then take down um, and just leave them lay and and um, because it's forest service land. But so we walk. We're at the horses. We're gonna burn an hour or two, and so we walk up this. It's a. It's at. It's also an old, really old mining road where they some old timers used to mine in this mine gold in the area and still do actually you can get a like a free permit and anybody and their brother can as long as you don't use any big equipment you can go and with a shovel and pan, pan for, for gold, gold. Yeah. yeah yeah and a lot of these and a lot of these creeks but um so we walked up this old mining road and now we're at the end of the road and, and we're, we're at a boundary of the Frank church wilderness. And, 
um, we sit down and to have some lunch and we're like 10 feet apart and I'm leaning against a rock and we're, we're surrounded by dark, dark timber, but we're in a, we're in a rock slide, an old rock slide that they put this road right through and the rock side, the rock slides only like, Oh, 75 yards wide and a hundred yards long. Otherwise it's dark timber. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So just a, a small rock slide in the, in the middle of, um, <clears throat> forest and a lot of spruce, a lot of pine, a lot of fir. And this, this little break in the, this rock slide gives you a little bit of a view because otherwise you can't see anything. <laughs> You're in the woods and there's no views. And um, that was kind of why we walked up to this spot. And in the middle of that rock slide, there's like five mature fir trees and they're, they're tall. They're probably, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet tall. Um, rocks, and grass all around these these this patch of trees um and like i said it's not exactly in the middle of the rock slide but it's in the rock slide there's rocks behind this group of like six trees so it's like an island um and you can see all the way around it and the dark timber the timber doesn't start you know, from that patch of trees, there's, like I said, it's kind of an island. And, and so I'm the tree, this patch of trees is probably 25 yards in front of me. And then, uh, and just, just rocks in between us and behind that pat, that group of trees, there's rocks for another like 30 yards. And then the, the timber starts and I can see both of us, we can see, around these trees and I'm just that's where my gaze is at right just randomly and and if any any animal would have been there or you know no there's no way an animal could have just a big animal could have walked into that group of trees without (laughs) without us seeing it within the last 10 or 20 minutes um maybe it was there the whole time uh or you know maybe this this animal that I I'm going to talk about was there the whole time. Like if it was a bear or a moose or a a wolf or an elk, um, (laughs) it it would have had to have been there the whole time because we would have seen something walk up. So anyway, we're sitting there for a good 10 or 20 minutes and my gaze is right on this group of trees. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm looking at (laughs) the top, basically from the waist up and I can't see one shoulder, but I can see from the waist up one shoulder, which was the right shoulder and a head. And it's a, just a massive black blob really. It's, you know, I mean, it's in the shadow and, um, so I'm, my, <laughs> my gaze catches this spot and and it's like I, uh, it was it was just a black it was a black outline and I and I my so my brain starts eliminating or thinking okay what is this um, is it a moose no is it an elk no is it a bear okay maybe it this bear I must be looking at a bear climbing this tree right. <laughs> And the next thing I know, this obviously happens in just a few seconds. The next thing I know, this figure moves and and hides from me behind the tree. And I'm still, I'm not thinking any, I'm not thinking Sasquatch. I'm not thinking Dogman. I'm not thinking anything like that. I, I, um... And now I'm standing up because this piqued my curiosity. Um, and it's, I'm expecting to see this bear 
what I'm thinking is has got to be a bear at this point. Right. I'm at, just expecting it to to climb this tree or climbing down from this tree and and, mm. and moving on. And I <laughs> I picked up a rock. I threw two. You know, it sounds sounds. I don't like to make a lot of noise when I'm in the in the wilderness. Um, I just <laughs> I, of course it goes with with hunting you know we're always we're always quiet but i i just i have a stop i have a soft tone and and i don't like to make a lot of noise when i'm in the woods it doesn't matter which woods i'm in if i'm just hiking by myself with my dog in iowa or guiding a hunt whatever and i but i'm i picked up two rocks and threw them down there not at the not like tried to hit anything but to flush this animal out of there because i'm it's not making sense yeah your curiosity these animals yeah i'm these animals don't just hide from me like that and um nothing happened and it and this is all just still you know (laughs) in seconds and i never took my eye off this spot and I said out loud to Tess, I said, I'm going to walk down there. And at this point, and she's been looking down there too, in the same spot. And I'm, I'm a very, I'm a hunting guy. I'm a curious, I'm a curious person when, when there's a, something that I'm not under, something that's not registering in the, in the wilderness. I'm really comfortable. I'd, taught wilderness survival school in Maine prior to all this. And I, you know, I'm, I'm a woodsman. (laughs) And so I said, I'm, I'm going to walk down there. And before I could even take a step, maybe I took a step, but before I could, you know, I was just in the middle of taking a step and I was literally, I was, I was going to V line it down that way and not you know still just not really knowing what i'm thinking or what it is and from behind us we're so they 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 plowed this road out through this rock slide and so there's a steep embankment behind us it's a real narrow road i mean it was like at this time it's wide enough to to ride a horse through real easy but and well even a four-wheeler we took a had taken a four-wheeler up there but um that's about as wide as it as it is and and so it's a real steep embankment real narrow trail and um up like a 10 or 12 foot embankment with rocks and maybe some dirt um the some younger growth i suppose it was younger growth yeah because they had 40 or 50 years prior plowed this road out so yeah some younger um pine trees were growing and they're probably 15 10 10 to 15 feet tall new growth and those those trees started and didn't stop for you know 100 miles (laughs) it's like we're in the middle of the wilderness and there's and so i'm just to try to paint the picture a little bit, these trees are, they're, they're right on top of us, right? I mean, it's a steep embankment, narrow, like four wheeler trail. And I'm standing up now and I'm ready to, to head down this rock slide and see what the heck is going on. (laughs) I, I mean, it was, uh, it wasn't the form of a bear, you know, I just, it was a it was a shoulder and a head, right? <laughs> Staring at me, and I couldn't see its eyes. I'm not gonna say I could, you know, I wasn't looking into its eyes, even though I could tell. Thinking about it right now, that thing was just locked on me, right. like, gosh. And and um and then it slowly moves behind this tree, like it's. Oh man, I don't know if I'm painting the picture great, but when you're you're out in the in the woods of Idaho, man, there's you hear stories. You hear stories of 
and I'm not talking Sasquatch stories. I'm, you know, there's whether it's crazy people in the woods and, mm. and, um, you just, Oh, and we're, we're, <laughs> we're half hour four wheeler ride from that, from that Edwardsburg spot where there's a, a park ranger station and, um, and then three hours to a fricking highway. Right. Um, we're re, we are re- remote. <laughs> are you armed and at the time? I didn't have a gun on me. Oh man. No. Wow. No. Yep. And <clears throat> I, there's not a lot of grizzly, the grizzly bears don't, they don't live in the Frank church there. There's grizzlies to the North, South, East and West of us in the, in the Frank church wilderness area, but they need a, they need a higher, they need a, more of a, a protein source and they get it from grubs and believe it or not. Um, but if there ain't certain kind of grubs in an area, there's no grizzlies there. <laughs> okay. And, um, and they might not like the terrain, but anyway, so the only reason I'd carry a, a, a steel on my hip is if a horse goes down in the back country, you got to shoot it right. and put it out of its misery. Cause there's, there's no getting, getting it out, out of there. But so not armed, <laughs> but I'm not, scared for my life at the time i'm just like this is happening quick and before i could take a step towards that patch of trees where this this thing just kind of hid from me we get this this noise um from behind us it couldn't have been it was I'm not going to explain this worth of crap either because it was so strange and out of the ordinary of a, of a noise. Um, and, and the, how loud it was, Jeff, I cannot explain it, (laughs) but (laughs) this ongoing, like it's it's not even a chatter but i'll I'll say uh this extremely loud chattering was it like a clicking or um more of a more of a so later talking with tess she explained it as a xylophone okay and and click at with (laughs) mixed with clicking if you to hold two quarters in your hand and hit them together as fast as you can. It, we used to, I used to do it when I was a kid, squirrel hunting, and use that, use two quarters as a squirrel call to bring squirrels closer to me and okay. get and get them worked up. Um, so it was like a squirrel chatter when you clank two quarters real quick in your hands, just rapidly. And a xylophone, if if you guys remember. Or if you guys know what I'm talking about with that instrument, where it's the you, you hit it on them, and it's just like ding 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 do do do, you know, and yep. all all pitches, and it goes real low in pitch and real high in pitch. So you add as <laughs> as dumb as it sounds, you add a xylophone, you add these quarters clicking together, and then you add like the <sighs> and it, and it's I can see. When I hear that, when I hear people explain that they heard what they can only explain to a samurai chatter, um, mm. see, so if you can picture that, um, if you can picture that in your ear, extremely loud, coming from right behind us, right above us, right behind us, and it was like a cadence, like a it was like a communication thing, but it was, uh, the most abnormal instrumental. Oh, Oh, I, I, I don't even, I, I can barely remember that noise. (laughs) And, and I, I wasn't myself at when this, when that noise happened, all of a sudden I, my, my uh, curiosity, my my comfort level, um, just 
was gone. And I, I looked at Tess, she looked at me, we were just, I don't remember. I, I, I can't, I'm not just going to make this, you know, I'm not just going to, I just, I know we looked at each other and I, gosh, I can't tell you how usually I'm a, I'm a, if something around me piques my interest, I'm a curious guy, you know, I, I don't get scared easy. I, I check things out when I'm out for a walk in the woods or if I'm, you know, hunting or guiding a fishing trip or whatever, pack trips. I mean, I've, I've trained green berets in the mountain for a week at a time to prepare them for a upcoming deployment. Um, so they, you know, know horsemanship skills and, and, and that kind of stuff for these special forces guys. <laughs> like, I've been in a lot of different situations and with bears and grizzlies and, and bad horse wrecks and the whole nine yards. Um, so I, I don't run from fear. Things slow down for me. I was, I'm a veteran actually, and, uh, got some real cool training and spent a short time, um, being trained by actually, um, some instructors who were, you know, Navy SEALs and, and, um, I wasn't in that community or in community or anything, but I, I've been through some cool training and, um, I was good at what I was doing while in that, in that kind of high stress training environment. And I think slow down for me. I, I think clear in a stressful situation. And that was, you know, I, I think I got that slogan from the military, but <laughs> when this thing, when this noise, when you're in the middle of nowhere and something like that happens, um, I just, I don't know that I was, you hear the term in the Bigfoot community, um, you hear the term where you're zapped. And I, I don't, not saying that I was zapped. Um, I just, I, I just, I turned and, and, and walked away, you know, walked back down to the horses. Tess came with me. My, my, um, (laughs) it wasn't, I wasn't terrified. I wasn't. It was just like I was something, you know, I wasn't like being controlled to just turn and walk away and (laughs) not investigate or, you know, I didn't even take time to do anything, right? Just um, turn and walk back down to the horses. And as we're walking now this part I can remember more clearly as we're not, you know, we were just five minutes up the, up this four wheel road, but, um, probably halfway back to the horses. Um, now I'm like, I never, I never was zapped. You know, I was always fully there. I think I just, I don't know. Um, what, what was going on and so now we're walking back and i this part i can i can clear clearly remember and i'm hearing we're being paced on our right which was uphill where that noise had come from and something's pacing us to our right and then below us (laughs) i i don't have any other way to describe it other than we're being paced Mm. to our left and it wasn't it the thing that i saw i know what it was now i mean it was a well i maybe it had i don't know exactly what it was but i can't say it didn't have a, a snout or anything but i just you know it was a sasquatch and that that thing wouldn't have had the chance to leave that group of trees um 
So there's obviously another one <laughs> that was to our right the whole time, downhill and to our right. So as we turn and, and walk back down the hill a little bit towards the horses where they're staged. Um, Were the horses I'll, behaving oddly? No. 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 Okay. We, I, I, so we got this thing pacing on each side of us, and we got all the way back to the horses. And now I'm... <clears throat> starting to put two and two together mm -hmm. and i'm yeah it's like whoa okay i i didn't exp i didn't um say at years years before this i was in the boundary waters in northern minnesota and we were hooting and hollering or you know whooping and hooting and like <laughs> the like the begin like the animal planet bigfooters did right yeah hitting trees every once in a while and just being being silly and um that so I, yeah i'm flashing back to this trip in boundary waters quick but that night when we were in the boundary waters we my buddy we we had beer hidden and in, back into the, the woods a little ways where there was uh a spring with cold water and it was it was summer so that was our cooler and um he was back we we me and um joel were by the fire and our buddy was back 180 to 100 yards into the woods getting a beer and we had music and a fire bonfire going joel and i did and we heard a tree knock you know just like they always say right <laughs> clear as day back <laughs> towards where my buddy was <laughs> having this beer and the next thing you know he's sprinting up to us scared as can be and that you know whatever did a huge tree knock i mean a sasquatch had to have been freaking a huge tree knock right next to him so that was in a you know i didn't mention that earlier whatever but that was a, an experience that I was like, whoa, maybe, maybe those things, maybe Bigfoot is real. I mean, that wasn't a really, that was just a tree knock. I mean, it could have been, could have been anything, right? I didn't see a, a Sasquatch knock a tree, right? So who knows? Um, I'm a, yeah, I, I go by logic, and I, I'm a lot more open to things, of course. Right. So you just you, really few quick, years, you but, jumped on that. You jumped over to that story that you were yeah. with. with. What, yep. what happened back with that one? So people aren't confused. I don't want to confuse anybody. Yeah. What happened with, with which one? When you were with Tess and... Uh-huh. Yep. I'm going to go back to that. Um, okay. So we're walking back, and... I was just, yeah, I was explaining that Boundary Waters story because now we're back at the horses and I'm starting to put two and two together. Like, I just saw the upper quarter. I can't say I saw both shoulders, just the upper quarter, like from the waist and the whole right shoulder and, the, and a huge head. <laughs> the outline of this. Okay. And like a... And it's like, holy cow! I'm, we're back at the horses. I'm starting to put these two and two and two together, as I'm being surrounded by whatever's walking just out of view in these trees around me and the horses and Tess. Wow. And the horses aren't going crazy. I mean, there's deer around. There's elk around. The elk, the elk and deer would come eat that hay that we have right next to the horses, and. Um, <laughs> oh so now it's i'm nobody's freaked out where i i'm literally i'm acknowledging that i'm surrounded by possibly bigfoot and um and we just fed the we we untied each horse and walked them to the creek that was right there and we had to kind of manually give them give them a drink and and um before we rolled them all into our into our backcountry camp 
probably within a day or two. But anyway, <laughs> it was just, and that's, I mean, I, I, there's no big, huge kaboom ending where, you know, the next thing I know, a, a Sasquatch walks out in front of us and all the horses. I mean, it wasn't anything like that. It was just that. Just that, eerie, that was right? Yeah. Yeah. That was that was it. How and, many? Um, how many do you think? Like I, I know that you you had clearly at least seen two that you that you saw. But did, did you feel no, like clearly you were, saw one? One. Okay. Yep. Yep. But you you pretty sure that there was another one because that one couldn't have moved two like more. that one. Yeah. No. So, so yep. you think there was about two more out there? Yep. And. um that just started walking with us back to the horses like they had like they do it all the time and mm. and and so i started thinking back like gosh this past couple of weeks that we've been coming up here every day i'm constantly hearing footsteps and, and you know i'm just playing it off because there's there's deer crap and deer tracks next to this hay right and you know we'd see deer and and um so and it's fall Right around fall oh, yeah. time, so yeah, I mean the, the, the woods make August. the woods make a lot of noise, you know, just yeah. settling down as oh, seasons yeah. change. Yep, yep. And um, so I'm I'm now it's like wow, I know what I just saw, and I and what we just heard that that was unnatural. There, there yeah. wasn't a man behind us. We didn't even have to. I, we didn't even have to look. We didn't, we, we just, it wasn't even a possibility <laughs> that there was a person behind us that made this noise, right? After, and, and if I wouldn't have seen that, that figure in front of me, I mean, we're 25 yards. That is, that is right in front of me. If it wasn't in a shadow, yeah, I, I, I it was a clear, broad daylight, sun was shining. And the next thing I know, this black thing is is locked on me, <laughs> and that tree. And so, so this starts. Rem this happens that day, and 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 um, now I'm thinking back to the previous, like the year before, 2017, and I'm in the middle of the Frank Church, and. Um, me and another guide, we, we would, we were the youngest and we would, um, switch each morning and of getting up at 3 a.m. And we, we, the horses were free grazing all night. We'd put bells on the mares and because all the other, the mules will stay with the horses and the, the geldings, the boys will stay with the female horses. And so we'd, we had bells on probably seven mares and 28 stock total. And they would just, they were out and free grazing, doing their, they'd go anywhere at night, right? This is for three and a half months in the fall while we were guiding hunters. And um, the hunters would fly in to, to uh, an airstrip in, in the Frank Church, actually the Cabin Creek. Um, airstrip uh and um so anyway <laughs> i i'm waking up every other morning at three o'clock if it wasn't you know otherwise it was like three thirty quarter to four when i was getting up so it's not like it was a big deal <laughs> it was kind of cool um waking up at three and you'd go out with your headlight and go walk a half mile or so and stop and listen try to hear a bell and you know i'm hearing wolves howling elk bugling and, and it sometimes gave gave us uh me and that other guide this was no secret but it'd give you an advantage to where which which way i would want to ride out of camp that morning right if i'm hearing an elk bugle from a mile or so away in a certain direction boom you know where you're going. Uh huh. Yeah, and and elk hunters do that nowadays. They they um they'll get up in the middle of the night and go bugle, or they'll go drive up a a road, leave their leave their base camp, and and 
say go drive down gravel road and, and listen for a bugle in the middle of the night because elk have kind of maybe they haven't learned but they they bugle in the night a little more and they've because there's not a bunch of boneheads like us out bugling and spooking them away and stuff so anyway i'm out a lot of times the moon is so bright and and you know if you're professional stargazers they they go to places in idaho um to to stargaze and so i you don't even need a headlamp a lot of times um and so gosh i would be walking along and for some reason this was always in the i had okay i don't want to get ahead of myself so i started seeing (laughs) it would be that we're in the middle of the frank church it's open grassland it's it's like no other place on earth we're we're high elevation but it's not all just timber it's it's rolling hills uh the shoshone indian the shoshone natives were they lived there um especially in the summer but um they lived along big creek and gosh a lot of their remnants are are there right now still to this day and um and and so it's open areas there's meadow it's it's just like rolling meadows just endless and then there's patches of dark of big timber and um so talk about elk paradise man and it's 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 an eight thousand dollar hunt for one week for these guys and gals yeah and um and this is public land and that's that's rare (laughs) so it's a it's the hunt of a lifetime we we would ride 42 miles on horseback me and a few other guides to to get to our our camp and um one way (laughs) and so from from that was from one direction from the from the other direction it was like it'd be like 29 miles so you know we're about 30 miles into the wilderness legit and um so um yeah just to paint the picture a little bit and on the edge of one of these so i'm up in the mornings looking for these horses and it it's not always easy and i'm <laughs> as i'm walking along and we got three blizzards in september in 27 2017 that year and so we had a lot of snow and um so <laughs> So I'm walking along one morning and I see this out in the middle of the open, this pat, this, this pile of spruce boughs that are broken off a spruce tree, green, and in a pile, not around any other tree. And and I got to, I, I live to track, you know, I'm always I'm always tracking whether it's, it's just, you get addicted to it. Any hunter know, a lot of hunters know and trackers and trappers know. You just, you get addicted to, to looking at tracks. And so you try not to look down the whole time. So you might miss animals, but I'm, I'm very, I'm a, I'm a, do a lot of tracking and still to this day. And I've taught it, you know, I've, whatever but um so i i see this pile of spruce boughs it's like a circle um gosh the size of oh boy the first thing i'm looking at right now like the the hood the front hood of a truck is about the the size of the circle and you know i know it hood of a truck isn't exactly a circle but you get the idea and it's like a oh a foot and a half tall okay of bouncy right you know a spruce bow yeah and um something had broken each green spruce bow but there wasn't a track there wasn't a track to it and and this didn't just happen once and it just and it didn't just happen in one spot and it was happening after fresh snowfalls where there's just 
is impossible. Right. And so I'm, <laughs> I walk up to this and the first time, and I'm just dumbfounded, but I don't have much time. Like I, I got to find these horses. And once you find them, they they're stinkers they they will once they see your headlamp if you're using one or whatever if they hear me hollering because i'm hollering and they'll they're sometimes a mile away and there's like five different spots that they'll like to be and so you get to a high spot and you listen and then you walk and get to a high spot and you listen and um freaking wolves are out howling and just just wild and the stars are like no other and so yeah, those horses and mules, they, the mares would, once they hear you hollering, a lot of times they'll stop and they'll freeze. And so their bells don't jingle. So you don't know where they are. And, um, so it's, it's like I'm moving cause I gotta get these horses. And once you get to them, they'll start running back to our camp and it kind of wakes, it's, it wakes the hunters up. It's kind of a cool thing for the hunters that there's all of a sudden, <laughs> There's 28 horses running through camp into the pen where another guy that spreads out, you know, grain. Yeah. And um, that's what gets these horses running back every morning because they're, they're like, okay, yep, we're going back for grain. And then we got to saddle them, eat breakfast, and we're out riding an hour, still an hour before daylight, right? And um, so the first time I seen this pile of spruce boughs, I am just... I don't have much time to to like investigate, you know. It's dark out and I'm, gave me the chills and yeah. there's and there's these she's so I'm thinking, okay, the hunter, you know, another guide and a hunter must have sat here yesterday or whatever and mm-hmm. and just just blew it off. And then and then I don't know how long later, whether it was two days or a week or, but I'm probably three more times that fall. I would find that exact same thing. And it was like, it was, it was a lot of times it was set up like it was over, like it was watching the, the horses, um, which is, which is strange too. Yeah. Not really, but, through, and I and I would go back, so I'd find these piles of spruce boughs, and I it was, I didn't I'd see them when I was during the day when I was riding with a with a client or two, and I would ride so and I at least once maybe twice during the day I walked or rode our horse over to this pile of spruce boughs and just got off my horse and really kind of investigated it i mean there's no trees around right there's let alone a spruce tree the spruce trees yeah i mean yeah uh hunter like hunter 200 300 yards away Something yeah there's, had to carry it there's a forest there. yeah yeah it's it's i am um, brought in there i just Man. wanted to bring this up we got about 20 minutes left yep. of record time um but i wanted to ask so what do you think these things because you had said that they usually occurred after a snowfall what do you think they were sitting mm-hmm. on them or and, and was there any uh, scent around there no never never scent um never tracks i i i'm not saying that it was always after a snowfall i just know for a fact that it at least once if not twice it was after a fresh snowfall mm-hmm. i mean there wasn't tracks around it even like period which even is the, weird yeah green because something like that just doesn't you've got uh-huh. a clearing and, unless yep unless something mm-hmm. just can appear and disappear yeah right yeah yep. i mean it's 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 like the only other way of explaining yep. it is that it just magically dropped out mm-hmm. of the sky and landed there Mm-hmm. And I have the chills from head to toe right now, and it, it's that's and it, that's it takes chilling yeah. just to even imagine because oh you know just so I because I if you don't mind I want to ask um yeah just so my understanding of it and maybe other people Please. will help understand mm-hmm. them understand mm-hmm. so pretty much you're two. 
300 miles away or, you know, whatever hours, you're three hours Mm -hmm. away from any civilization Mm -hmm. in the middle of God's country, some fresh snows down on the ground clearing. There is no spruce anywhere like within the vicinity Mm -hmm. of it, just a fall. And And they are stacked perfectly. Yeah. In a, just yeah. this beautiful kind of, I yeah. mean, it's that's yeah. the only other way of explaining it is it's got to be beautiful to see uh, yeah. upon Erie as well. Oh, I cannot explain, man. Wow, I, that's I got amazing. these chills right now. And I, yeah. And where, where that was, it, it, it was, this was the year before that first encounter that I, you know, where I yeah. just talked about. So yeah, where this was, this was more than, three hours you know this was an airplane ride wow (laughs) i mean it's at it's the most the frank church is it's the frank church river of no return wilderness area and it's it's kind of well known as being the most remote spot in the lower 48 and they the way they judge that is how long does it take uh and help to get to you even via aircraft right right, right. <laughs> it's kind of how give, they judge that just to give everyone a size mm-hmm. of frank church mm-hmm. river of no return wilderness the size of this area is two million three hundred and sixty six thousand acres mm-hmm. of just wilderness and it, yep. i'm looking at a picture of it yeah and it is absolutely god's country it is beautiful wow yeah yeah and the thing is it's surrounded by other national forests Mm -hmm. and so it's like that's what makes it the most remote because it's surrounded by like the bitter root i think to the north or whatever in this elway or, or you know or up there and um so does that make sense? It's this huge wilderness area, but it's surrounded by other will, other wilderness areas and national forest lands, right? So it's just, it's, yeah, talk about wild. <laughs> that is truly oh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just hearing that, I mean, that right there is mm-hmm. uh, something that, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's definitely an encounter of some mm-hmm. sort, but it's like, you know, I, you, you lived it. I'm mm-hmm. just imagining coming out of my tent, you know, <laughs> looking around. Yeah. Oh, it's a great morning. Yeah. And then, Canvas tents with wood stoves. There's a guide tent, a client tent and a cook tent. Yeah. Three, three canvas tents, big ones. Yeah. And then kind of looking and then mm-hmm. you see this pile of spruce just mm-hmm. placed in a circle yeah near where the horses hang out all during the night it's almost like the the whatever oh. made them was sitting and i'm not going to say bigfoot i'm not going to say mm-hmm. dogman because we don't know but whatever mm-hmm. made it just sat there and watched just mm-hmm. watched so it didn't yeah. get wet or cold or whatever oh, oh. yeah it, it wow. kept itself off the frozen ground which shows and intelligence. No, yeah, yep. And it, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah it, that is amazing. <laughs> you're, this is one of the few times I've, I haven't relayed that to, I don't know if ever, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. And I, to talk about it just chills me to the bone. Because yeah. uh, how exposed I was. <laughs> At the time, yeah, yeah, I didn't even, I didn't. I mean, yeah, you're with hunters, a, yeah. but what if, you know, I mean, what you're with hunters. There's obviously firearms, but well, a mile what if there's away. A, yeah, yeah. What if there's just say 10, camp. 10, 15 of these creatures, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever kind of creature made these things mm-hmm. lurking around. You guys don't stand a chance. We don't stand a chance. That's, that's, it's a, that's terrifying. I know you've got some <laughs> other experiences. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, I, like I said, we're coming up on time now. Yep. I don't want to run into it. So, um, after we end the interview, me and you can set a time up where we could do a part two for of this. Cause I'm, sure. I'm really interested in more of yeah. the interesting stuff you've got to share. Yep. Um, you know, I mean, right there, you shared 
three experiences that, in my eyes, even though there was there was visual, mm-hmm. but not one hundred. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not like one hundred percent visual. Yep. Visual. But you're so far out that that what you saw is not a person. You know, like what what else can no. it be? And like you said, it's exactly. not a bear. You know, it's not. No. Damn. No, no. There wasn't a like that visual I had of that one. There wasn't a spot for a bear to to be. Mm-hmm. You know, once it hid behind that tree, <laughs> there wasn't anywhere like so. Anyway, the spruce yeah, circle it, ones really messed me up, man. I mean, uh huh. Just dude, the, it. Yeah. Putting that into perspective in your so, mind, you know, mm-hmm. it's just like what the and you're by yourself it's, mm-hmm. it's dark <laughs> you're looking for the horses and then yeah, you see this yeah like, what the hell is i got this? lost the first week yeah yeah wow that's that is really i mean that gives you a whole different kind of <laughs> creep factor <laughs> thank you yeah you know i mean there's yeah yes, and i seeing you know, one I, of these things face to face is scary but then when you mm-hmm. see something like this and you're just like how the hell what the hell? Mm-hmm. You know, you've got, how did it make it? Why did yeah. it make it? What yeah. made it? Yeah. I got a, I got a story. I won't tell it right now, but yeah. Uh, Damn. My by <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine and a fellow guide that I work with. Oof. Yeah. He told me. He, he had a story. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you're, like I said, I'm going to be going Mm-hmm. we can just talk about it really quick here um i don't know if you're gonna be free tomorrow night i should be well I, yeah i work a little later um well like i'm up all night i don't sleep yeah 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 so, i mean be. i'll work your schedule yep. um 9 30 but that way your time, but, people yep. people get this thursday morning mm-hmm. and then with Friday morning, they can hear the rest of your, because mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, when I saw, you know, you said, I'm a guide out here. And I was like, this guy's got some stuff. Yeah. And that, that one, that, I've never heard anything like the, the spruce. That just, I've that never had me either, out, man. man. That's yep. just freaky as yeah. all get out. I mean, that just, there's no <laughs> explanation to I've it. I've held that in for five whatever six years yeah wow. and goodness um and i i tried to explain to people that i i'm not just another weekend warrior i i'm i'm in the back country seven months of the year and i train and and yeah. or i mean yeah i teach <laughs> i teach the stuff and um I'm very, very aware. I'm very in tune. I'm, I don't miss much in, in the woods. Right. And, um, I, I just, I have a knack. I go straight to, I just, I don't know. I don't need to get into all of it, but yeah, I, it's just awesome. I'm a professional and that's my story. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I'm going to, I'm going to end the interview right here. Yep. Um, that way we don't go any further. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing what you've shared with us yep. so far, because I know that I'm blown away by, mm-hmm. you know, just the way you explained the first two, but then the last one just kind of, mm-hmm. that one really messed, messed me up. And I can only imagine what it yeah. did to you to hold that in for that long. I- Seriously, man. I mean, that's just like seeing, yeah. you know, like that's like uh, what it, the people that hunt UFOs, you know, mm-hmm. that sees a circle in, you know, a burnt circle in the in the sand in the desert. You know what I mean? That's like mm-hmm. something like that. It's unexplainable. Yeah. Where the yeah. hell did that thing come from? How did <laughs> yeah. it happen? Where are the tracks? And where the hell did it go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, so do me a favor. Don't hang up. Um, yep. I want to talk to you okay. for a couple minutes before and uh, thank you for coming on and mm-hmm. sharing today. I really appreciate yep. it. Yep. My absolute pleasure. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I will, uh, I will talk to you uh, in a few minutes, but yep. once again, thank you. Is there anything that you'd like to end this with? 
Um, no, I, of course I just, I go with my gut and my gut was to, to share it with you and your, your subscribers. And I'm, I'm diving into, to you and your content these last few weeks. And I just, since I'm on, this is my one chance. Yeah. I wanted to give a shout out to Victor, but, um, anyway, I appreciate your time and I'll hang out on the phone here for you. Awesome. Awesome. I'll talk yep. to you in a second. Thank you. Yep. All right, folks, a lot of information shared right there. Let's jump into part two of this very informative and very vivid uh, interview. I literally felt like I was there when he was telling me some of these experiences. Let's get into it. All right, everyone. Last night, I had a subscriber on, and wow, what an amazing story that he had to share with us. And that word story, I'm not using that as like a, a fictional thing. He had just, he painted the picture. That's what I mean. He, he really, everything about the way he shared his experiences uh, really painted the picture for us to put ourselves in his shoes. You know, how he described uh, the wilderness, how he described the kind of spruce beds and stuff like that. And a lot of you guys seem to really enjoy uh, Phil and him sharing his experiences. So like we said last night, we got him back. Phil, how are you? I'm great. Awesome. You know, and it was truly, and I, I talked to you for a couple of minutes before, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was blown away. Just, you know, the way you were able to share your experiences um, and, and really paint the picture for us. And I really liked the fact that they weren't, like right in your face, like I, the dog man was, or Bigfoot was 30 feet away and I could, it was, they were there and I knew they were there and they were leaving these signs, like the spruce beds. There's no way of them happening in nature or natural and there they are. No tracks around, no nothing, but there they are. So, I mean, great yeah. storytelling and I appreciate that. And I, I, the, from the comments, everyone else did too. So, um, yeah. I know that you wanted to, that you wanted that you'd kind of left something off about the spruce beds and stuff like that. And you wanted to get into that quick and then jump into some experiences. So I'll kick the mic over to you and, uh, you can share away. Okay. Yeah, I sure appreciate that. And, um, and your subscribers just going through the comments today and I was able to respond to some and, and then maybe I'll go through again tonight. But, um, yeah, I, to me, I left out a, what maybe you could call it a significant fact from that pile of spruce boughs. And I hope, I hope, uh, the listeners watch <laughs> our first interview from the day, from the night before last night. And, and not this one first, because they're going to wonder what the heck we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put part two on this. Oh, there you so go. People... Yeah, yeah. So, I'm just going to dim them that pile of spruce boughs. And when I was taking a close look at them, at them in the daylight, um, there was a slight depression in that pile um I, I know i said it was a foot and a half or or 18 inches thick of spruce boughs and there was a slight just um depression on the i guess kind of the top layer and you can tell if part of as it as a tracker, one thing they they look for is 
just a, a, a leaf that is turned over when the other leaves maybe aren't. <laughs> and and that can, can tell you, can paint a, a huge picture or it can put a put a huge piece puzzle piece to your puzzle if you're if you're tracking a certain animal right and the smallest thing out of place mm -hmm. yeah and them that top layer of them spruce boughs was underneath the, the a spruce bough it's green bright green on top and then underneath is a little lighter of a color and i they were they were laid down really nice. Um, however, that top layer, it was, it was like something, um, you know, was standing there, sitting there, uh, just some of those individual needles were, were out of place and they weren't perfect. They weren't symmetrical and, um, I just, that, that was, that was very, quite significant for me, uh, when I was standing there looking at them in, in the daylight and, yeah. and I'm, you just, I had no, you know, we don't need to get into, into that whole story, but I. I had no answers and that and that was a whole nother thing and I left it out last night on accident. Um so You know, I'm I shared I'm that with I'm my dad, that. uh that that experience and what you you know, how you had talked about that and mm -hmm. my dad literally keyed on it just like what you had you know, he was like maybe they were sitting on them watching the horses mm -hmm. or watching you guys, you know, just, just yeah, sitting, yeah. observing, keeping, you know, their feet or their, their bottoms warm mm -hmm. and or keeping their tracks cleaned up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they, and they, if they're sitting there, they're going to melt a, they're going to melt that snow down to the ground. Yeah. Um, and you know, maybe they didn't care. Maybe they, who knows? Right. Yeah. But, Definitely an interesting, mm -hmm. you know, something that just that, that really, it, it stuck in my head all night, you know, after I heard <laughs> it. So it was, it was definitely a very significant piece of uh, yeah. proof to me, you know, I mean, it, yeah, it doesn't yeah. get any more solid than that. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I don't lose sleep. I'm a good sleeper. And last night I... I don't recall some of the, a couple of those stories I'd never <laughs> really told anybody. And, and that, and then the longer one with that possible Sasquatch being, I've just told that a few times over these year, five years. And, and so my, I had a real hard time settling down last night because I, <laughs> I was amped up amped up and reliving it <laughs> yeah. and um it's all good but uh so i just tossed and turned from there um where where do we go with your experiences mm. from the uh the very dense yeah. park in idaho uh-huh well i'll um there's Tess and I we're we're no longer together. We're great friends actually still and um she's in southern Oregon and and maybe she could get on with get get on uh, an interview if you ever would want to because for whatever reason she could relay that original story her and I had and she's had a few few other things. Yeah, that'd be cool. Nothing too too crazy, um, but she's she's a uh, Wrangler Packer. I mean, she's um, her and her sister started a a horse riding business in in or Southern Oregon, and um, so I'm gonna go to when I was out there for a winter. I I'm kind of a snowbird. I 
spring, summer, fall, I'm in the mountains and, and just guiding and full time every day, not a day off one. I mean, 15 to 17 hour days, just, it's a lifestyle. It's not a career, but, um, so it was a winter of, oh boy. <laughs> What are we now? Twenty-two. Um, well, not last year, but yeah, my, yeah, the winter of twenty twenty. So I, I that fall, I of twenty twenty, the the pandemic year, I took that summer off just because all the question marks and and um, <laughs> drove back home to to northeast Iowa and. And then July rolled around and the money's rolling short. And so I was looking for something a little different and, and I ended up for an outfit on the kind of the Colorado, New Mexico border and, um, elk and deer and bear. Yeah. And, and then after that and and she came out actually for for the last few weeks of that season and and helped even guided with um a little bit and and then we headed to headed to the coast of southwest oregon where she that's kind of where she moved 10 years ago from her original birthplace in michigan but so kind of her stomping grounds in, in Southwest Oregon and, and, um, so we headed out there and pulled my camper out there and, <laughs> um, yeah, I just drove up a, a forest service road and, and found a cool spot and parked my camper. And so we're, I mean, we're outside of Williams, Oregon. I, I don't. That's a real small town. That's gonna anybody that's interested. That's you're gonna know right where we were, and that that's great. And um, just a uh, hand six miles outside of Williams, up a uh, Forest Service road, and <laughs> um, we did a lot of hunting um, and turkey hunting and deer hunting. The season's run a little later in Oregon, and so we were able to catch that in December and in, in January too, because yeah, the, the elk season in in Colorado ended in November. But so we're out doing a lot of a lot of hiking and hunting, and and I, she was was helping at a a horse boarding place just down the road and i wasn't working so you get bored right and (laughs) you gotta do something (laughs) so yeah a lot of hiking and exploring and and anyway we 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 have a we have a mule her and i together (laughs) we have a mule together that's that's funny but she and so I was training this mule. Actually, we bought it. We bought it that winter, and when, and that was my project in in January, kind of all late winter and into into spring. And now that mule that we bought for a hundred bucks, I'm I mean I'm not exaggerating. She's a fifteen thousand dollar animal right now. Wow. If I, I we'd never sell her, but because we've been, she's been a guiding. She's a She'll lead a string of eighteen horses on it, and um, she's done it plenty of times. But um, so anyway, I'm yeah, I'm kind of training that that mule. She thinks she's a horse, but <laughs> <laughs> so one day we go out on a regular. They're just they're they're old mine. They're actually they've mined on these. Forest Service roads too, but I definitely uh, the lumber company made these roads, or the, or some miners as well. There's gold in that in that part of the country too. But we're walking up one of our regular ones, and 
I I don't know how we would have ever started talking about um, this particular subject. It's not strange that, that we were talking about Sasquatch and, and that scene, but <laughs> we were we were thinking what is something that we we knew about the structures and and just that that that's cool and that's its own thing um mm. and that can be some that that's obviously proof proof right there that something's out there but um so I we're thinking we got to laughing because I don't know if it was her or me but we we started talking about well the best kind of the best proof or the best sign that we could get right now um, <laughs> would be a, a fresh pile of scat. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to swear cause unless, you know, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. just, uh, and, and it would have to be, there, there's some bears around, and, and I know bear scat. I know lion scat. I know it all very well. But just a <laughs> a heaping pile, Big old of, pile of, of Sasquatch fresh, crap. Fresh, fresh scat because we we knew about the we'd heard about telepathy and and kind of the mind speak and and um, that whole thing, and so. We we talked about it and joked about it a little bit, and I I am not making this up. That that day we came across the and we were talking about it out loud, and, and maybe this creature could have heard us. I'm not saying this this part of the story is telepathy, but I'm we. Walked right up to a huge, <laughs> abnormally, you know, you can tell the difference of human type uh, bowel movement than than an animal. It's just right. the, everything, everything about it's different than from a bear. Well, not everything, but it's. <laughs> so we walk up to this fresh. I, I freaking like I often do, put I'll put the back of my finger close to scat, whether it's elk or deer if we're hunting or something, and just to try to feel some warmth. And, and most of the time, I end up kind of the back of my one of my fingers touching it just to see if there's any warmth still there. Yeah. And um, and that's what I did, and it was warm, wow. and I. <laughs> No, not being gross, not being yeah. like, but like there's a, there's a distinct, you know, w warm or was it, you know, like had it been sitting for, I mean, cause obviously it's coming mm -hmm. out of a living, a living creature. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be from 98 or whatever degrees. Yeah. Um, was it, it's was it fresh warm or how fresh warmth would you say? Well, it. It's winter in southern Oregon, and it, we're in the mountains, not real high elevation, but it was 30s in the 30s. Wow. Maybe 40s. I mean, it was cold. And and I know we that I went over that in my, or we, maybe we talked about it, or it went over my head. But I had thought, you know, how how, how long would it take for this to, to cool down? And I don't know, but... It was just just slightly warm to the touch, and and um, yeah, that's all I that's all I that's all I know about the the temperature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just just it was, and and it wasn't anything but a, a an absolute. It just looked like an absolute huge human type. Uh, with texture and the form 
um, yeah, human type. Wow. Human, human like, and yeah, because there's dude, a difference was, between. Was, we had just talked about it, and um, oh, was there any kind of like not like, uh, and that's I, I enjoyed your experience last night because i mean you, mm -hmm. you painted the picture you didn't you painted what was there mm -hmm. you didn't paint what you thought was there you know um yeah yeah was there other than the scat i mean did you kind of hear anything nothing no tracks just this pile of scat and no tracks because you said there was snow no so there's no no snow what wow no snow no yeah snow? It, no snow it, it maybe flurried twice and, okay. and was and would be gone within a day that that year and and most often in, in that southwest oregon area but no snow no no tracks um it was all leaf covered in the forest and the ground was just leaf covered and and and, and hard um just not a noise that whole that whole winter, I mean, or, you know, never heard a whoop, never heard anything, never, just mm, <laughs> nothing. And so we can go back if you got, if more questions come up, but that part, that story doesn't stop. Um, it, but it was another day. This, we're, we're, it's her and I again, we're a little on the same side of that mountain and, not a huge mountain or anything, just we're a little higher up on another branch of a, of an old forest service road that, and they make the, they make the lumber company a lot of times keep those roads open because they made them and now they, they have to cut trees. They're responsible they for the they, maintenance. Yeah. They don't plow them or anything. Right. But, here yeah they they'll clear the trees a lot of, a lot of areas um they have to but so we're just a little higher up on another little offshoot of that that road and um this time i didn't say anything to test i didn't say anything out loud and as we're walking up this mountain and it, it's gonna be we're gonna sit it's an afternoon kind of and we're just going to sit till close to dark and then walk back down to the camper and, um, 30 minute walk or something. But we get to, I, I, okay. So I'll just back up. We, I'm in my wower on this hike up this mountain in my head. I, I said, okay, leave me leave us another pile of scat and i'm testing out kind of the telepathy thing and um which i never had before really and never received telepathy from anything or anybody um and so in my head i said leave me another obvious sign like uh, of scat and um i wasn't using the word scat i'm sure but anyway <laughs> so we 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 get we get, get walking along the side of this mountain and the trail at the road ends and it's turns into pretty it's an it's a north it was a north facing side now and so it was a lot of vegetation because that's more shaded and, and that south southern Oregon gets hammered by by heat and sun in the in the summertime and drought and, and um, so that north facing slope was a lot more vegetation I, and I, I remember it clearly and so the trail ended and I I can just I have a very clear memory of the last of this whole I'd been up there a bunch so um not to this particular spot but um anyway <laughs> the trail ends and we step into the we keep walking and bushwhacking just for 40 yards and she sits we sat test down um 
and then she was going to watch the little lower area for her deer. And then I climbed up the, up the hill, probably a hundred yards and to where we, there was a, you know, couldn't see each other. So there was no way we were going to shoot, shoot towards each other. I knew right where she was and, um, she knew really, we had a great idea where I was going to be. And, um, we sat for two or three hours and, and, um, then we meet up, didn't see anything, meet up, bushwhack through a real thick spot to that, to that road. And, um, it's like wide enough for a four wheeler, you know, you on that, stretch you wouldn't get a pickup up that far but and we start walking back and we didn't go we didn't go 100 or 150 yards were you gonna say something no oh, okay and uh and we got to this we were approaching this stretch of the trail that i <clears throat> on the walk in i'm i'm gonna just say this part because I, I hope you guys believe me and it's because it's the truth, but I, on the way in, I had a slight off feeling about that particular stretch of the trail. And, um, just, it was, I just had a, a slight feeling and right in this particular area. And it was getting close to obviously where that road ended and where we hunted for a couple hours. And then, so, so we're walking back. We just started walking and made it a hundred or 200 yards and we start getting to that spot. And I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't, I don't think I was feeling freaked out or anything. I, I, um, and, and we get to this stretch of the, of this road and trail road, whatever. And, right in the middle of that and it's just wide enough for four-wheeler and right in the middle we could not have missed it on the way in a huge pile of scat of of just maybe the same but maybe bigger hmm. uh, than the, the week or two or three prior than that than that last instance and and she looked at you know what i don't know but we she's just like we just both stopped and just stared at it you could we could not have missed it on the way in right and not that that really matters anyway because it was what i had asked for and through my mind and there it is. <laughs> I just, what do you say to that? Yeah. What do you do? What do you do? And what do you do? Now, <laughs> you, the crazy thing about this is, you know, you've been out in the deep, deep woods. There's no mm -hmm. other way of saying it. you got to put two deeps to that because... You know, three, 300, three hours away from, you know, the nearest small town. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's something that, you know, you, you seldom come across. And then just on the spur, you think about it and you ask for mm -hmm. it mentally mm -hmm. and you're like, bam. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of uh, researchers, a lot of theorists, and stuff like that. And I only say theory because it's all it is mm -hmm. right now. Cause we don't really yeah. know for a hundred percent, but yeah. believe that, believe that Sasquatch has some toward type of, uh, telepathy and, okay. you know, able to communicate mm -hmm. or, or understand, maybe not communicate with us because, you know, maybe we don't have the receptor, but maybe mm -hmm. ju get what we're thinking. You know what I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, there's an interesting case, and, it, and it's a Sasquatch case. And ironically enough, uh, th th this weekend I'm going to 
Ed and Lorraine Warren's daughters, Paracon, and mm -hmm. Lorraine Warren, who, those of you who don't know, she is a medium, and Ed was a demonologist. He was like the only mm -hmm. civilian that could do uh, exorcisms per the Catholic Church. Um, she had a experience where she had communicated with a hurt Sasquatch, uh, it's a story that's only been, I've only heard like bits and pieces of it, but I'm going, you know what, that's probably one of my biggest questions. If I get a chance to talk to their daughter is ask about that because I want to know the whole story. You know what I mean? Like how did it go down? What was your mom feeling like? You know, uh, was she drained afterward? Because y these things really have some maybe like i don't want to say magic but maybe it's something that they're using in their brain that we lost through we lost through, through that, time yeah. you know that could could be it was, you know we yeah. gained technology and we lost mm -hmm. this little two percent or one percent of our ability in our brain um that house the telepathy part you know so but yeah that's a very yeah, interesting yeah. it's crazy you know just you're thinking about it <laughs> and there's it? this I mean, big pile of crap and you've been out there you know the difference between elk you know the difference between oh, bear crap i mean it's that wasn't even a that couldn't even have been a grizzly pile it, no, a grizzly is and it wasn't even was half that size wow. of that pile and and so, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, I haven't, yeah, well, not that it matters. I, I've maybe told one person <laughs> that whole story. Right. Too, because of what, <laughs> it's just, but with the mind speak thing, is, was there something that, to that or was it just totally random? Could have been. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been. You know, I Could think been, uh, it's how you yeah. feel at that mm -hmm. point. It's, you know, it, it's what the person that experienced it feels. Was it, mm -hmm. was it, were they understanding me or was it random? You know, however mm -hmm. you, and talking yeah. to you and, you know, uh, hearing this now, but talking to you for a couple hours last night and a little bit today, mm -hmm. um, you know, I kind of feel like you feel like it was definitely a telepathy meant to be thing. Mm -hmm. So definitely. A free, yeah. That's so yeah. cool, man. It really is. Yeah. Wow. I listen, I read a comment just before we got on tonight from, from our video from last night and, and a, a gentleman just tonight wrote a comment and he'll probably hear this. I, um, I hope, but he just said, I appreciate you, Phil, for, I, I don't remember what exactly what he said, but to stick in with the, the facts and not, what was the word? But, you know, yeah, not <sighs> jumping to a conclusion or, or just whatever he said. But, yeah, and that, that, that's the best compliment. And that's, I mean, I'm, yeah. Nothing, else, nothing more to say on that, but right, absolutely. And I said it too. You know, I said it to you. Mm -hmm. I said you, you really painted a picture that was there. You know, it mm -hmm. wasn't one that you wanted to be there. It was, it was there. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't bright colors. It was the colors that it was. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and I appreciate it too. So yeah, yeah. Definitely, uh, definitely yeah. some very interesting experiences. And you know, when I read that comment of yours, and mm -hmm. you said, you know, the the comment that connected us, I, I knew for some mm -hmm. reason I knew I was like, this person really has seen some very interesting stuff mm -hmm. in the woods of America. You know, I mean, that you're yeah. you're going places that they're probably no man has touched you know for a long I, time i guarantee you i put a, i've put some footsteps in in literally areas that haven't been touched right. um but um definitely 
in some areas where only natives have have stepped foot and 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 uh, anyway yeah you're right on and i'm i got to thinking today also uh, if somebody was wanting to because if you if you take an average joe or an average jane and and have them li- listen to my story and if, if they don't even know that sasquatch or dog man or any of that's up for debate they're gonna they're gonna think i'm i'm crazy <laughs> yeah but um well shoot i lost track of that's all right you're good where i, I was going there i got you um i know that you wanted to talk about the telepathy uh, mm-hmm. kind of experience and then I guess we could move up up to the state above Oregon Washington yeah yeah yep I I spent uh, let's see last <clears throat> June, well last May I I headed to Washington to Northwest Washington and enrolled in a I used my last of my GI Bill and enrolled in Wilderness Awareness School. And, you know, people can look it up. <laughs> and it used to be called Anaki, but it, they just kind of, they go over a, a ton of different stuff. And there's a, an adult, a year-long adult immersion where you meet three days a week for eight hours a day and and then we'd take multiple like four and five day trips to mm-hmm. one trip was to the Oregon dunes where it's just in a, on the coast of of Oregon and it's just incredible it's where the forest meets the sand dunes mm-hmm. and there's a state park there and we go we went there for tracking the whole week oh cool yeah, with some professional trackers and and um, yeah, camped and like twenty six of, of us students and then like eight and ten, twelve. Well, there were some apprentices, so yeah. I mean, twelve. Is that government and funded and stuff? Is that government funded or privately? The school? Yeah. Oh no, it's it's college credential level. Okay. Yep. And, but they do stuff for kids and, and summer, summer camp and, and, um, yeah, just an incredible place. Okay. And so I was there until this, until this spring, early this spring. And then I headed for spring bear season and guided in, in Idaho, not in the Frank, but, but, um, in Clearwater National Forest and uh northeast idaho kind of we were idaho montana border basically but anyway so i'm in washington and it's a it's kind of a leadership outdoor leadership slash wilderness awareness wilderness survival slash um inner work or uh like just just learning you know almost like you'd learn at going to a psychologist you know just bringing up old inner child wounds and things that have maybe kept us unhappy or just kept us not functioning um great Mm-hmm. And, and so that was part of the part of the school too. I mean, just all around, quite the place. And so, I'm I had guided a a guy, and he lives up in Northwest Washington, and um, we're you know 45 minutes from Seattle or an hour east, and he has property. He has a piece of property, how many acres? I don't know, 12 or something, but they're building a house on this property. It's out in the woods outside of Black Diamond, Washington, 
just a town of like 200 and he's out he's got this property outside of there and we had we still are friends uh, well obviously but we had stayed connected I, I guided him in an archery hunt in, in Montana in 2019 in the Swan Mountains um, and we stayed in touch and which is which is common when you're sleeping in a tent shoulder to shoulder with a <laughs> with a person for seven nights yeah plus and you're, then with them all literally with them all day him and i spike camped or yeah and um so just him and i took a couple horses and, mm-hmm. and a mule and and got and went way out and sit um pitched a camp I and mean, literally in the middle of the elk but hmm. and then the, another guide kind of dropped us off and took all the horses and and so i didn't have to worry about the horses and since we were camping in the elk just we had i pitched two tents i made every three meals a day for him and i and and um just to paint a picture a little bit um of our friendship and and so i said yeah i'm going to school in washington and he's like well why don't you set your camper up on my land on my property we'd rather have somebody there anyway for safety right and and because they're building this awesome new house and they're gonna they were starting to get furniture and and things like that moved in and um so i couldn't even see the house where i had my camper that there was a, a chunk of woods on his property and it we're surrounded by woods i mean (laughs) <laughs> it goes and goes and goes for miles um kind of to our east and south and then to my north and west would have been you know, like suburbs of and stuff um like 10 miles away but where the suburbs kind of started um so anyway <laughs> uh i i guess i and hopefully painted a little bit of a picture there and, I, and and one night i it was get it gets dark so early and stays dark late in the in the winter months and we're pretty far north up in northwest washington there and so it wasn't it wasn't odd at all that i was he's got kind of a long driveway and i had my dog and and it wasn't odd that i'd walk her up that driveway and towards his house and there's woods on both sides and and um let her stretch her legs and do her thing and and um it might i was also up early a lot i i would do a try to do a workout before class and it i i do well with yoga type stuff i'm (laughs) A lot of years of being a uh, of beating up my body and and now it's like nothing better than stretching and so anyway yeah. we had to do a 5 30 yoga class a lot a few times a week minimum and um so it was a lot of times i was and i had to walk my dog macy uh black lab i had to walk her before i would leave and be gone for until four or something and Oh, I'd take her along a lot too, especially if I worked out before class. So she wasn't in that camper so long, but she's older. And anyway, so one early morning, probably between four thirty and five, <laughs> I'm on that. I'm on his driveway, and it's woods on both sides, and there's elk going through his property, and. It's all private land around, and um, deer, elk, real, real occasional bear. And um, so a little bit, you know, remote for, for, for him. It's remote for that part of the country. Um, but so I'm walking up his his driveway and i'm up on top of the little knoll and it's there was a little must have been a little bit of a moon but 
because I could see, I could see, I couldn't see the ground and it's all fern covered, like two to three foot tall ferns cover the, cover the forest ground there. And then his property was second growth. It had been lumbered. Oh, I bet you, I think the trees, the, the fir trees were 25 or 30 years old and that's pretty accurate um, guess I think and so they were they don't like on a tree farm especially these fir trees they they don't grow low low branches um, the, the branching is more higher up on the tree so and they're probably it's, I don't know 30 feet tall or something but so out of nowhere I, there <laughs> there wasn't any any strange noises uh leading up to this or anything just absolutely everything's perfect and and I out of nowhere from my left and above me I just there's a at the same time that I'm seeing this black um, shadow, I mean, there's there's no, I, <laughs> again, there's there's just real hard to explain, but I'm I'm seeing this black, pretty large size. I mean, I just just shadow because i don't see any color i don't see any this this is like the first this is just just absolutely in the blink of an eye this is my description is i i don't know i just see something black moving quick and at this same time that this is happening i got a a shriek um <laughs> not like uh it was a um gosh you know the pterodactyl yeah like a thunderbird or whatever yeah can you picture like <clears> there <throat> what we've seen in movies i suppose and and oh, what the noise that one of those huge large birds would make okay um can you pick like the, you know like a saying? shriek like the shriek yeah, it would like, make, a, or like the wind yeah, yeah. um just yeah. a a piercing loud noise in my face in my ear wow. and uh a blue heron if there's uh, if there's any real animal people out there there's there's two there's two things that their their mind might go to right now, especially bird people, and I'm one of you. I'm a I'm a birder, <laughs> but but um, a blue heron, a heron makes a a very um, sounds like a pterodactyl, and I bet you there's been people that have confused. They think they've been think they've thought they've had a cryptid encounter or something a strange encounter by just hearing a heron because they have that kind of a pterodactyl what we would think a pterodactyl would sound like but they have like a dinosaur type sound and uh, so that's a blue heron and option another option for that um, and this is going through my head in this split second um and a barred owl and maybe you've never heard but um not all not a all, very, all very distinct sound yeah yeah no i'm not talking yeah i'm not talking about their they have that yeah you know who who cooks for who who cooks for who <laughs> <laughs> that's the barred owl um but I believe it's the barred owl. I, I didn't double check this and I'm, and I'm, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but 
I believe they're the they're an owl that will dive bomb even deer, but even people. Yeah. And um, I suppose a territory type thing. And I don't know if they if they make a a noise when they're doing it or not, but. And so this is what's going through my head, right? <laughs> as if, as I am, I got taken off my feet. I, by the by the noise and by this hmm. black, about the size of a, I, I just a large, a little, just a, you know. I didn't get a great look. This is all in the corner of my eye. I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but. I'm not seeing anything other than something black and I now I'm realizing it's coming at me and and it was already in my face. It was already right there. And it's like it was coming from the sky. Hmm. And um but the noise uh it it was so close to me and so loud that I, I don't know if it, it could have, I, I very well could have been a, an owl and just a screeched in my ear from feet away and, and swooped at me. And then, but here's the, the big kicker. I, I, and I, I was so startled that it, I was on my right side. This came from my left. I was on my. I was on the ground. It just. I just took me off my feet. Nothing touched me. Right. But, and so I'm. I'm hitting the ground and at the same time looking and putting my arms up, and. And then nothing. There was there. There wasn't a flap of a wing. You you would have heard that. There wasn't a. There was, this was along the driveway, so there was some taller bushes, and, and, and I know I said it's all fern covered and just three feet tall fern, and then, and then you can, you can see, um, kind of over the top of them ferns for, for 50 yards in, in a lot of different directions in, in those type of forests, but there were some, some taller, I don't know what they were, just some bushes. And and that if it was a bird or an owl, it would. And this is the middle of the night, and owls can obviously they can see better at night. But the other birds aren't aren't out much. Um, like some hawks, of course, too, definitely. Um, but there there wasn't. It's like it disappeared. There. There wasn't anything there, right. <laughs> and oh boy, I I hope uh, this makes sense a little bit because it it was the it was the noise this the that I heard what just took me right off my feet and and I'm not a jumpy person. Nobody can even scare me. You know, we we're messing around in a growing up. I, I'm, I don't even get scared when somebody jumps out and tries to scare me. You know, I'm just kind of one of those, one of those people, but, um, yeah, just nothing. That's crazy. And I got to thinking, okay, I, I've thought about this since then, um, here and there. And especially for, I shared that with the whole, class that day that morning <laughs> um but there i just bet i don't know what else to say i had thought about it a ton and i it's one of those unexplained like mm -hmm. it, it's in that category of the spruce bets yeah it's unexplainable it happened yeah. and you can't you can't put You've been out there, you know, you know what you know, and you know probably more than most that have been in the woods, you know, yeah. and, and you have no idea. You're just like, what, 
what was that? What, you know, and mm-hmm. you're floored because you can't figure, you just, it's yeah. something you normally don't hear deep out in the no. woods, you know? No. I don't mean to cut you off, but we got about 20 minutes um, of record yeah. time left. And I want to, I want to, uh, hear your friend's experience or the other guide's experience fellow guide yeah yeah let's go there um so this was i was guiding guiding with him for in 2018 and um it was after tess and i had had that and this was that same year tess and i had that i saw that figure just yeah one other, I don't even want to go there, but yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm processing all this over the next few weeks of that, of that sighting of whatever I saw and what, what happened with us being paced. And, um, and I ran it by one of the other guides that had been guiding in this, in this particular, for this outfit um for seven years and it was only my second year and um well so i'm still at the frank church but in 2017 i was i was guiding for a guy an outfit and then the next year his brother really had had some hard i don't know lost a couple of his real main guides right before the season and so he has an outfit on on the other, just kind of on the border of the Frank Church, and um, and so he's the one, where, yeah, where I was explaining where we had the horses staged, and um, so it's my first year meeting a couple of his other guides, and it was just Tess and I, and 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 Johnny, and then another guide, but I'm talking to Johnny. And it's just within, I don't know for sure, but within a, a week or two or three of what Tess and I had just experienced. And I said, and I asked Johnny if he'd ever had anything weird happen. And, and I was more specific. I don't know how I said all this, but I mentioned Sasquatch and he, you, he, he, kind of laughed and and said no nothing never had anything happen i and he and he he was not a believer i don't remember his exact words of course but mm-hmm. it was clear that he he'd never seen anything and and just he was a professional bull rider before he started guiding but just a, a great guy um he was a few years older than me at the time and Anyway, he said, but, (laughs) and, and, uh, and then he went on to, to tell a story from one of his first years guiding hunts. And I I might've made a mistake when I said he'd been guiding for this same outfitter for seven years. I think he had just been there a few years and and was with a different outfitter for his first couple years of his guiding of his hunting guide career so um because he was in a when he explained this to me he was in a different part of the state he was near stanley and um so that's how i'm putting two and two together that right now but well i had before but anyway he was in his hunting camp with with the outfitter he was working for and, and, and their clients, and they had just gotten back from a day of hunting and, and got the horses back. And and he said they were sitting down, and a lot of times when you sit down to eat, it's you wait till the last guide and hunter come back for the day, and it might be 11 at night. It might be 7. I mean, it gets dark real starts getting dark earlier as the fall goes, but, um, it's late, it's later and well past dark. And, um, cause we wouldn't stroll in till dark or later. Um, so they're sitting in cozy camp 
and sitting down for to eat and all of a sudden they they hear somebody yelling and they're kind of like well, that's strange and they all piled out shuffled out it's dark and they're in a backcountry outfitters camp and they hear that they're all there and then they, they hear some yelling and hollering and, and they all shuffle out and this this guy comes up to him comes kind of i don't know whatever walking and walking up to him he's it's it was archery season so he was all he was all in camel you don't have to wear even in well yeah, some people wear orange and, and rifle, but um, you don't have to in Idaho. Anyway, he was, it was archery season. I just I know that for sure because I know he was an archery hunter um, from when from how Johnny was telling the story. But so this guy comes up and they, you know, Johnny noticed right away how shaken up this guy was, this hunter. And he was all all alone. And they go into the cook tent. And um, he said the guy didn't say much. Uh, but just white as a ghost. And Johnny specified that. And this is coming from somebody that doesn't really believe in cryptids. <laughs> Johnny. And uh, he... He said this guy was white as a ghost, clearly shaken up, not saying much, and they they got out of him that he was a, a local and um, just hunting archery hunting alone, and um, so what this the guy didn't say much that whole night and, and just he 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 asked if he could stay and they said of course you know, with whatever. And, um, the guy go just, who knows? I don't know exactly what happened. I'm not going to make something up, but that next morning, Johnny, finally, this guy was, Johnny went up to him or whatever. And, um, started talking to this guy before he left. And he was, uh, he was a local and he hiked in, uh, a couple miles to where he archery hunts and he said he was sitting he had kind of a, a stream or a river to his back and um wasn't not in a tree stand he you know a lot of times we're not hunting out of tree stands out west like we we do in archery season in the midwest and and out east but i don't know if he was sitting with his back to a tree or a, or a rock or something is he's kind of the usual setup it breaks up your your outline and um so next thing he knows he gets uh this hunter gets a a huge huge rock comes up over the ground all the brush and, and low bushes or whatever's there up and over arching in the lands just right in front of him hmm. and um and he just thought, you know, whatever he, th I don't know what he thought, but I know what I'd be thinking is, is who's messing with me right now, yeah. right? Who, who's out here that's strong enough to throw this rock, you know, over this, that, that's what I'd be thinking. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, I don't know if it was one or two more rocks. I just don't remember the, the story that Johnny was relaying, but something, <laughs> some a rock that that a man could not physically throw up and over these bushes or trees or whatever, and landing right next to him, and he he got up and and. Um, for whatever reason, he he didn't go back to where his truck was. He knew this outfit had their tents, and he, I I want to say yeah, he ran there, but you know I don't remember fully completely the story. But he uh, he he went to this hunting camp, this outfitters camp, um, 
and just showed up and and then i already kind of filled you in on that what what he um how he was acting when he showed up and and um how that all went down but again i is it a is it a story that's gonna blow the socks off somebody and and face-to-face encounter with a you know whatever but this is a story coming from a a hunting guide who doesn't believe in anything cryptid who's relaying who the only because i asked if he'd heard or seen anything weird and and he still remembered that time that that a hunter showed up into his camp white as a ghost and and i and i'm not going to speculate but do you th- who knows did that hunter get a that archery hunter that was got scared out of there who knows what he saw maybe nothing maybe it was just the size of a rock being thrown at him that made him not even the, the he must have thought the he must have knew that this outfitter camp was closer than his truck because he was so scared that I guess I'm, I'm I'm not assuming, but maybe I am a little, but he was so scared that he went to the quickest, closest location. The safest spot where he could go. Mm-hmm. And another part of this story was that Johnny told me was that it was he was supposed to be out there for a week or ten days, and this was like day one or two. And and so when Johnny was talking to him that morning, he was he waited till daylight, and he was walking out back to his truck. He was done. He was going home. Huh. He was a local, which would have been around Stanley, Idaho, and um, just to. If you think of a postcard of Idaho, it's Stanley. I mean, the Sawtooth Mountains and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, I've never forgot that. And I, yeah, it's a powerful story. I mean, yeah, for you especially, you know, because yeah. you know this guy. You know who he is. You know, He's a bull rider. Yeah. He's as tough as nails. And... You should have seen the horses he was getting on to, because guide there's guide horses and client horses, and <laughs> guides turn the the horse into a client horse, right? Just by Riding breaking them. it yeah. in. And Johnny, <laughs> before the season, he was the one that was up there with Tess and I. He wasn't with Tess and I that day of our encounter, but he was that other guide that was there before the season with us and packing in these camps, and so. He was getting on two and three year old unbroke horses that his, you know, I know one of them was his buddies and, and he, and Johnny was breaking it for him and stuff. And he'd get on a horse that had never been, that had never had anybody on him. And we're, we're outside of Edwardsburg and, um, that's three hours for help. Hmm. And you're getting on a green young horse that could if you fall and break your leg or or have a bone go through your your leg and you could bleed out and die (laughs) i mean cut cut it cut an artery on your main artery on your leg or whatever and you're dead yeah and um that's the kind of guy johnny was he just no fear no bullshit no fear um and i was grateful that he relayed that story to me and i've and the reason i chose to relay that tonight is is because i it's significant to me um yeah yeah because of his background and who he who he is and um it it wasn't any it wasn't a story about him i mean right it's like well, he he didn't make but, that but up. But for him to hold that story, you know, like he you said, that story. it 
that must have resonated with him for a you know mm-hmm. that hunter that showed up in the the hunting camp he was in yeah never forgot that yeah. he said he never forgot that and i'm i never <laughs> johnny telling me that i That's i crazy. won't forget it either no no but um we're coming up on yeah. time um i suppose i suppose i i blown away once again by <laughs> your experiences you know um mm-hmm. it's just it's it's insane the amount of just things that people wouldn't really think of that are actually mm-hmm. terrifying, you know, until you hear, <laughs> until you hear them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Until you hear it, you're just like, whoa. Yeah. So, yeah. And when you're vulnerable and, and, um, in a vulnerable position, yeah. whether you're, whether you're in a house and, and somebody's intruding on your house and you're worried for your life there, um, or you're in the middle of the, most remote wilderness area in the lower 48 and and something happens yeah you're you are exposed you are vulnerable and and you're going to learn a lot about yourself and and how you and very and quickly then you're, and then at the reality check that that's this is real life yep this isn't a it's not a joke and uh when you when so, when i had something these things happen it's i gotta live with it and i gotta swallow that and um i gotta be with people every day all day who don't even have a clue what's going on right and um so (laughs) well i want to thank you for coming back Mm -hmm. and sharing these experiences with us um as you can tell from the comment section, you looked into it and commented back on mm-hmm. quite a few people. Uh, people really, really enjoyed hearing hearing what you had to say, and um, yeah. I really appreciated it because it was, uh, it was enlightening. You know, it was uh, mm-hmm. just something something different that really me put things into perspective too. So, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's hundred percent just my pleasure, and um, yeah. Do me a favor, don't hang up. Uh, okay. I want to end the interview, and uh, once again, thank you for coming on, and um, it's 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 been great. I really appreciate it. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All, All right. right, thank you, and we'll and um, thanks, thank you to your your family. Well, they're all of us, man. You're you're a member, too, you know? So, all right, brother. Have a good night. Yep, yep. I'll stay on, but we'll see you. All right, folks. I hope you all enjoyed this bonus upload. Man, I really enjoyed when I sat down and did this interview. It was just truly amazing. Um, Phil is just one hell of a guy. A lot of information. I'm looking to get him back on the show and see uh, what else he has to share with us. What else he's been up to in the mountains of Idaho. Anyway, with that, guys, thank you for supporting the channel. Your support is what makes this channel continue to grow and go. And honestly, what makes it special, a place where people like Phil want to share without judgment, without ridicule, and treated with respect. Thank you. Everyone stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for answers, and God bless.